can you touch your mobile phone whilst it's in the cradle and you're driving? This is the question that is debated widely and fiercely online. So in this video, hopefully I can help you to understand the truth, but not just the answer, but my reasoning for the answer so that if ever a judge disagrees with me, you can see my reasoning for what I'm about to tell you. Because of course, this is not legal advice. It may ultimately be overruled by a court and say that I'm wrong. But for now, I believe that I'm right and I'll tell you why. But before we get into that, if you are new to my channel, I am Daniel Shensmith, a barrister of England and Wales. I enjoy helping you to understand law, and I've been doing this channel for a long time now. Thousands of videos in the library, you'll find something for everyone. Please do hit that like button and subscribe if you find this content useful. So let's get into it. As usual, there is a long version and a short version. The short version is... Technically, yes, it is legal to touch your phone so long as it is securely mounted in a cradle. And if you liken this to the screen on a Tesla and you were to answer a call in a Tesla by pressing the button, you are not breaking the law for many reasons. But first of all, it is not handheld. And if you just press the button to answer the call, you're not likely to be distracted. But all of this comes with the big caveat that regardless of whether you're breaking the specific regulation or not, you could still be held to be driving without due care and attention. You could still be held to careless driving or even dangerous driving if whatever you're doing distracted you sufficiently that caused a collision, that caused some serious injury or fatality. You could still be held accountable for those. And saying that you've not breached these regulations is not going to save you from that. So without further ado, let's go into these regulations, first of all, and explain my reasoning behind um, what I've just said, in that it is not illegal to touch your phone whilst it's in a cradle, with the caveat that I don't think you should. Uh, but let's deep into it. Um, first of all, let's look at uh, the regulation itself. This is the amendment which inserted Regulation 110. Now, this is very broad. It includes everything from illuminating the screen, checking the time, checking notifications, unlocking the device, making or receiving or rejecting a call, sending or uploading written content, oral content, sending videos, receiving videos, using the camera, sound, recording, drafting a text, storing, accessing the internet, whatever. This covers anything that you might like to do with the phone. Um, but only if it's caught within the regulations. And that is based on what I'm about to explain to you. The two exceptions and the caveats are contactless payment. You must be stationary and the food must be delivered to you or whatever it is must be delivered to you immediately. And secondly, in a genuine emergency. So with that out of the way, when do these apply? Now, they apply when the thing is in your hand. Now, if we look at this bit here, for the purposes of this regulation, a mobile phone or other device is to be treated as handheld. Now, let's talk about to be treated as, like for the purposes of the regulation, when does the regulation apply? It applies to a handheld device. Then it is a handheld device for these regulations in this scenario. So even if it's not a mobile telephone, it, it can be anything that has some function built into it that allows you to do any of these things. So it doesn't have to be a phone. It could be an iPad, whatever. It is to be treated as a handheld device if it is or must be held at some point during whatever you're doing that's against the regulations. So if it is in your hand, so this is in my hand right now, or if it must be in your hand at some point to do whatever it is you're doing. It is to be treated as a handheld mobile device for the purposes of these regulations. So if it must be in your hand to do whatever it is you're doing, then it's caught by the regulations. It does not say that, you know, if it's in a cradle and you press a button, that's not what it says. Because if it's in a cradle and you can press a button to answer the call, or if it's a Tesla screen and you can press a button to answer the call, it is not and it does not have to be in your hand to carry out that function. And that is not what the regulations say. 
Now, these regulations came in along with a change to the highway code. Now, that gives us three things additionally. First of all, there's an explanatory note to these regulations. Secondly, there's the highway code rule change itself. Thirdly, there is a, an explanatory note alongside the highway code change. Now, moving to the highway code, we look at rule 149, which obviously provides that you must exercise proper control of your vehicle at all times. This is the catch all. Now, I hear lots of comments. I read lots of comments where people say, what about a Tesla screen? You know, this, this is really bad, etc., etc." You know, you, you're using a screen of some sort. Well, that is wiped out, even if it is legal to use it, by rule 149, if you are not exercising proper control of the vehicle at all times, you are in breach of the Highway Code rules, which is underpinned by legislation because it is a must rule in the Highway Code. It goes on, you must not use a handheld mobile phone or similar device capable of interactive commun communication, whether it's active or not. So you must not use a device for those purposes. Remembering that using it amounts to any of these things, but it is to be treated as a handheld device if it is or must be held in the hand. So to, to do that function, if it must be held in the hand, then it's one of these devices for these purposes. It goes on to explain what this means. This ban covers all use of a handheld interactive communication device and applies even when the interactive communication capability is turned off or unavailable meaning if you've got airplane mode on, you still can't draft, you still can't pick it up and draft a message to send later, regardless of airplane mode being on. So it's turned off. You must not pick up the phone or similar device while driving to dial a number and then put it in the cradle for the duration of the conversation. Because what people were doing was picking it up, dialing the number and putting it in the cradle to have the conversation. That is specifically restricted by this rule. Likewise, in stationary traffic, you must not pick up and use your handheld phone or similar device stationary in traffic. And again, the two exemptions are a genuine emergency and a contactless payment, but you must be stationary and the goods or services must be received at the same time. It might be a car wash you're paying for, it might be food you're paying for, but you must be stationary and it must be delivered at the same time. So now we go back to the explanatory note for the regulations, although just to be clear, it is not a part of the regulations. It is an explanatory note. It is explaining what it was intended to do. So Regulation 110 was intended to prohibit the use when driving a motor vehicle of a handheld mobile telephone or other interactive communication device when, when performing an interactive function. So it is when it is performing uh, an interactive function. Now again, it says here that the regulations widening the scope of the offence to include any use of a mobile phone held in the hand whilst driving. So the key wording there, held in the hand. If it is in a cradle, it is not held in the hand. Now, if at some point this comes to court and the court says, well, we're going to interpret it even more narrowly and say it's in the hand even if it's in a cradle, which I don't think it would, then that would change things. But that is not the meaning of the words. Courts are not going to change the wording. They're going to interpret the wording. And most often it will be literally. They will literally interpret Parliament's intentions. Now, the whole reason for these regulations coming about in the first place was because the original law did not catch the scenario where somebody was filming the collision, uh, results of a collision as he drove past. He was filming it. The original law was for making phone calls and that sort of stuff. And so Parliament said, well, that can't be right. It has to cover m more wide a scope of different functions. And so this guy that was filming the aftermath of a collision with his phone was not guilty of the original law because it didn't catch the original law. So that is the origin and the purpose behind the changes to these regulations. Um, so that is what the explanatory note says here. 
a device that is held in the hand while driving. So whatever you, whatever it is that you're doing with it, out of any of these things, which includes anything, you can tap it and it will illuminate the screen. Even if you just touch it, if it's in the hand to do that, or it must be in the hand to do that, then it's caught by the regulations. But held in the hand. Now, um, let's move to the explanatory memorandum for the change of the highway code rules. It again provides clarification here at 7.7. .7. The code now explains that drivers must not pick up a phone or similar device, and they must not use a handheld phone or similar device while stationary in traffic. Uh, and these uh, changes clarify the existing position, etc. 7.9, however, reads, in addition, the department plans to include stronger and clearer guidance about the use of mobile phones while driving to address some of the misunderstandings that were evident from the consultation pro responses. For example, people wondered whether this change would affect their use of phones as sat-navs secured in cradles, which it won't. So there was the plan to release guidance as to when these regulations apply and to clear up the misunderstandings. For example, it can still be secured in a, in a e-cradle to be used as a sat-nav for the example that was given. Now, as usual, most of these things find their way back to the government website, which gives you a condensed version of the law itself and I think quite helpfully explains the situation here. Now, using a phone, sat-nav, or other device while driving. Uh, this couldn't be clearer. It is illegal to hold and use a phone, sat-nav, tablet, or any device that can send data uh, while driving or riding a motorcycle. This means you must not use a device in your hand for any reason, whether online or offline. And as I've said, that includes stopping at traffic lights, queuing in uh, traffic, supervising a driver, etc. This is what a lot of people are getting caught out for and they are getting six points and often resulting in disqualification because they're sitting in traffic using their phone thinking it's okay and it's not. It is not okay to pick up your phone and use it but it's got to be in your hand. Then the exemptions as I've mentioned a genuine emergency you're safely parked making a contactless payment or you're using the device to remotely park the vehicle for example in a Tesla. Um Using the device hands-free, this is where it gives you quite clear guidance for everything that I've just said. You can use devices with hands-free access as long as you do not hold them at any time during usage. Hands-free access means using, for example, a Bluetooth headset, voice command, a dashboard holder or mat, a windscreen mount, a built-in sat-nav, for example, on a Tesla, or well, most cars have them these days, the device must not block your view of the road and traffic ahead. Obviously, I hope that goes without saying. And you must stay in full control of the vehicle, etc., etc. So that is clear as well. But we can go even further than that. We can go right back to the origins of the um, proposals before the law came about to understand what was the intention even before these laws came about. And we find that in this document here, which is the guidance um, on the proposals and what the law was intended to change. And it says quite clearly here, the proposal will still apply only in circumstances where a driver picks up the phone to use it while driving. Any change we make to the law on the use of a handheld mobile phone arising from this consultation will not affect the use of phones which are positioned in a cradle and used while remaining in the cradle, for example, as a sat-nav. So all of these things culminating in what is on the government website, quite clearly here saying that you can use it hands-free if it's in a dashboard holder or mat. So it doesn't have to be on one of these cradles which is holding the phone like that. It can be a mat. It can be on a mat on the dashboard like this. Uh, it can just be on a mat, but securely, like one of these rubber ones, so it doesn't move around. It doesn't have to be gripped by the cradle like this. It can be on a mat. 
Um, I would recommend that it is in something more secure than that. Um, by the way, on your lap is not uh, allowed either. Um, the Met Police are prosecuting this offence if it is on your lap, because the argument being, and I agree with them, is that if it falls off, you have to pick it up. Um, the defence there might be, I wasn't using it, I was just picking it up. So the defence might be, I was picking it up off the floor to put it somewhere else, I wasn't using it. Because the offence is using it whilst it's in your hand, not just having it in your hand. Having it in your hand is not the offence. Using it while it's in your hand. That is why when these cases go to court, there needs to be evidence of using it, like tapping away at the message while it's in your hand, um, or holding it like this, or whatever. Um, simply holding it doesn't quite cut it, although you might get an over overzealous uh, magistrate still convict you for it you'd probably have a good ground of appeal to the Crown Court in that case. Um, but nonetheless, I'd recommend that it's in a, a secure cradle. Um, a windscreen mount or a built-in uh, sat-nav. So again, anything that is built in is fine, so long as you're not distracted from the road. Now, the caveat to all of that is that, as I said at the outset, you can be still be driving without consideration, careless driving and dangerous driving. So my recommendation to you is... Use it only as a sat-nav, and if you're going to use it for the phone at all, it is just to press a button to answer it and press a button to end it. I would not dial calls, even if it's in a cradle, even if it's technically not caught by this regulation. If someone is punching in a number in their phone, in my view, you're quite easily crossing the threshold of not driving with um, care and attention to the road. That is my view, and uh, I'm sure many magistrates would agree, and they would also um, convict you for that as well. So there it is, the short answer, the long answer. Uh, it's debated a lot online. It seems like a bit of a grey area on the surface because people, they they either don't care, but I, I believe people either don't care whether it's illegal to use the phone or not, or they are terrified of whether they can use it in a cradle and therefore they take the more cautious approach and don't use it and think that that's illegal as well. Technically, it is not caught by the regulations, but I still would exercise extreme caution and only use it as minimally as possible, answering calls and so on. So I hope that's useful. If you do find that useful, please do give this a big thumbs up and subscribe. That is how YouTube spreads my videos and keeps me going and uh, helps my channel grow. I really appreciate that. I thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.